Up, it becomes like a play holy place that anybody in the area passing through must come and pray to Rakat or Jin. They, they are passing, they come and pray to Rakat and go with this baraka, with this uh, blessings, with this secret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired the hearts of Allah to be moving around because with their movement around they bring the attraction and attention of other awliya and jinn to pass in the same places where they are passing that is because of the audience the baraka of those who are here if they were not here what's the benefit you are not going to sit by yourself and speak. They have to be here because as we said yesterday in the advice or in the lecture, the most important is the companionship. Sahaba of Prophet, the companion of Prophet reached that high level because the companionship of Prophet. And also in Naqshbandi order, they inherit from that secret awliya Allah and that's why Sayyidina Shah Naqshuband mentioned it in his life 12,000 times he used to sit with his student and say Sariqatuna as-suhba wal khayru fi jam'iyya our way is companionship this TV is shut down it's not running. Where is that? Why? Why? Why is it? it turned off. You turned it off. But Allah will never turn off His TV. His heavenly TV that Awliya Allah receive, if you want to make that analogy to a little bit to, ex to understand which is been this is a TV it's a, a dunya screen but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a heavenly screen which is now al-mahfuz awliya Allah and at any moment they direct their face toward Lawh al Mahfuz, they see what they need to advise and speak. Allah said in Holy Quran, Walikullin Ujhatun wa muwaliha fastabikul khayrat. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
ولكل وجهة هو موليها فاستبقوا الخيرات أينما تكونوا يأتي بكم الله جميعا إن الله على كل شيء قدير For everyone وجهة وجهة هو موليها For everyone there is a direction that Allah is the one that has f fixed it or you cannot go on another direction. It has to be the one that Allah has created for you, you have to go through it. He is the one that arranged it for you. Fastabikul khairat. Compete for he didn't say run for khairat, for goodness. He said stabiku. What's stabiku? Why no? Stabiku khairat. Compete. Compete with, with goodness. Means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes everyone to compete in sharia, ah, in Islam. If he pray two rak'ats, I need to pray four rak'ats. That is not hasad. Allah said, Sabikul khairat. Why has to be pious more than you? No, compete with him. Not out of hasad, but out of Allah obedience. Allah said, Fastabikul khairat. Compete with piety, with sincerity, compete each other. Wherever you are, Allah will bring you means Allah is giving you a direction when Allah give you a direction Allah confirming that for everyone there is a direction that he arranged it for that one to go through it okay where is our direction Allah saying there is one but we are not seeing one for this dunya TV we open it now and you can see whatever channel you like Allah is saying I'm giving you a screen I'm giving you a direction go through it we cannot go why we don't have a remote control you need the remote. Where is that remote control? In order that we will be able to open and see where is our direction to follow. Remote control is we have we don't have a remote control. If there is no battery in the remote control, the remote control doesn't work also. If you don't have a hand to push the remote control, nothing will work. So it means we are malfunction. Huh? We are mal disorder, you say? Huh? Huh? Disordered. Disordered. Human or malfunction. Uh, malfunction. Malfunction. Same. Malfunction. Not working. Mal is bad. It's not working. Then, why we claim that we know everything? Why we claim that we are guided? If you really are guided. You are really guided. Then you know your direction. We don't know our direction. Means we are we are malfunction. We need repara reparation, repairs. But if you want repair, we need a lot of spare parts. Uh, as they do now today, a uh, lot of spare parts for someone transplant, skin knee trans, heart transplant, kidney transplant. 
uh, chest transfer, transplant, uh, uh, pancreas transplant, liver transfer, transfer to Russia, transplant, but not mind transplant. Uh, did you see anyone they did transplant for his mind? No. Mind why? Why cannot do, they cannot do transplant? Why everything else they can do transplant except mind? A doctor? Where is the doctor? Hiding himself. Uh. Why? Uh, his mind controls everything. They cannot do mind transfer, trans transplant. Because there is one important factor. There is mind cannot be seen. Unseen. Iman, al Iman bil ghaib, to believe, the belief is in the unseen. Mind also, the way, the way it works is unseen. When you be able to see the mind, you can transplant any mind you like in any human being. Did you understand what I meant? Means when you reach the reality of three different issues Hudurullah, Hudur al Habib, Hudur al Mashaykh. When you reach the presence of Awliya, presence of Prophet, and presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you reach Mahabbatullah, Mahabbatul Habib, Mahabbatul Mashaykh, love of Allah, love of Prophet, love of Awliya then Allah will give you the reality of be in his presence. Then you are believing in what you are seeing. Then you will be given the secret of the unseen. Prophet ﷺ is being given the secret of the unseen by taking him to Mi'raj. He went to up to Mi'raj he was able to see the, what no one can see. And Allah is saying to you, Oh my servant, if you want to reach me, if you really love me, approach me through voluntary worshipness. For through worshipness that they are sunnah worshipness. To worship me through things that I didn't oblige you to do it. But you do it voluntarily from yourself. I will love you at that time, I will give you ears that you can hear with, I give you eyes that you can see with, where people cannot see. Means I give you faith, I give you Iman, because Iman cannot be seen unless you be given a direct power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like that Sahabi who came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, someone, Bedouin who came to Prophet Al-Utbi, it's very famous hadith called Hadith al utbi He came and standing by the grave of Prophet wasallam. He never saw Prophet in his life. He came to his grave, standing there crying. And there were one Sahabi uh, laying his head toward the grave of Prophet And that Al-Utbi came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I came to you to, to a, a the best and the most holiest place that Allah has given on earth is your grave where it has your body as Sharif, your holy body. I'm coming to that, that your holy grave smell is better than smells of heavens. I'm coming to you and reciting the verse that Allah re revealed to you in Holy Quran. Whenever they are oppressor to themselves, they come to you, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
asking Allah forgiveness and you will ask on their behalf forgiveness, Allah will forgive them. Ya Rasulullah, I'm coming you, to you asking Allah forgiveness. In your presence, ask for me that forgiveness. And he left. He was crying and he left. At that moment, that Sahabi who was lying down saw Prophet coming from his grave and he said, Oh, run! Catch him! And tell him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of what he said, has forgiven him. So he was running after Al Utbi and he told him that. Prophet وسلم, said to me that Allah has forgiven you. So, you see, because out of his deep heart, from within himself, his, his, his remote was working. His, his remote, full of batteries, charged, was working and by mentioning through his tongue and through his heart what he really was expressing his feelings to our Prophet وسلم, and mentioning that verse of Quran he received the answer go you are forgiven did anyone came to us and said Go, you are forgiven? No. But yes. We say no. Because don't give a space to your ego. Don't give a chance for your ego to be happy. Always cut it down. Yes. Yes. Allah said that he is he forgave us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the holy hadith that revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu that if a group of people are sitting together remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will remember them in a place better than their place and even someone that he is coming only for five minutes that he has something to take from someone here. It has nothing to do with them. Allah will forgive that person also. They are the group that anyone sit with them will not suffer and will not be punished. That is a holy hadith from Prophet means Allah will forgive Allah has forgiven us if we really come and sit but then that is forgiven then we fall into sins another time from week to week that is it is necessary that's why it is very necessary as awliyaullah they say as ulama they say every week Friday after Asr, between Asr and Maghrib, or Thursday evening after Isha, like tomorrow evening, or after Maghrib, between Maghrib and Isha, people sit together, recite Zikrullah from week to week. is like a cleansing process. It's as if you are cleaning your clothes in a laundry, in a washing machine, and wearing them clean. This Zikrullah meeting will clean your soul, will clean your body from any sin and will make your remote control to be charged and working. Because Allah wants it to be working. Allah said, وَلِكُلِّ وِجْهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّيهَا For everyone there is a direction that he arranged it for him or for her. He has to run for it. So we have to run to that direction, try to find it. Where is my direction? My direction is to follow Sayyidina Muhammad
to follow the way of Prophet And what is the way of Prophet? Uh, one word. Anyone remember it? Love. Love is good, but to be companions, and you need to have that character. <coughs> no, follow Sunnah where well, you can follow Sunnah. It's so diff so long way. Is to be humble. Humble means submitting to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Don't be stubborn with your opinion. Don't say to yourself, I know more. No, you don't know more. You know less. When you give a chance to your ego to say, I know more, you, are, you know less. Because shaitan is playing there. Humble yourself. Prophet wasallam is the most humble. When you are humble, Allah raise you. When you are arrogant, Allah throw you away, curse you. Allah cursed Iblis. That behavior that he showed, Allah cursed him. Alhamdulillah, Allah did not curse us. What Allah said in Holy Quran? He didn't curse us. Although we did more, more sins. We are doing every moment sins. Don't say, no, I'm not doing, I'm sitting at home, I'm not anymore working, I'm retiring, I'm not doing anything. Any objection in the house is, is hidden shirk. What well, means your ego didn't accept it. Any objection. You have to look at people, Allah is making them to speak. I have to take listen to them in order to take wisdom. So humbleness is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. To show humbleness. Iblis didn't show that. He was arrogant. That behavior Allah doesn't like behavior of arrogance are you arrogant yes i don't like anyone to give me opinions it's not do you like anyone to give you opinions might be your wife you're she's right. here huh you're right yeah she's here. <laughs> you're right So our, our problems is that we are not really understanding how to be humble. To be humble is to accept what people say. Listen to them. If they say something good, take it. If they say something bad, Leave it. They say, what is your opinion sometimes? Say as you said. <laughs> Don't put your opinion. When you put your opinion, means you are putting your ego there. These, these conferences, when they, they call them academian scholars, they go and speak in conferences. That, that professor will work for one month to make a presentation, to write a presentation. Thinking and thinking and thinking and putting his mind, all his ego, arrogance, pride, is in the paper. To make sure it's well decorated paper. Like Iblis, how he decorated it. Everything he shows you the best. Say, tell you this. This screen is better than preserved tablets. 
Allah is saying to you, I'm showing you the preserved tablets. You don't want it, you are crying for that screen. Iblis say, yeah, run to that screen. The other one is far away, you cannot see it. In Akhra you see it, postpone it now. So that professor is putting all his effort inside, although it's all his ego is in it, he has ego, he has selfishness. We know all professors are like that. I hope there is no one professor here. <laughs> <laughs> and he go and give, poor guy giving his lecture in an audience of 200, 500, 1,000. And then when one might not know anything, comes on the microphone because they have question and answer. And attack the professor and the paper he wrote and make him to look bad. Why? He wants to show himself knows more than the professor. Arrogance. Instead of keep quiet, you listen to this professor, you listen to that one, you listen to that one. For what to make, why you want to show yourself you want to pick on him or on her. Leave them alone. They say Pakistan is fighting. Let them fight, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> because violence needs violence to put them down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Rabbi, I'm asking you, requesting from you, three things. Not to send the plague on my ummah. And Allah said, you got that. <coughs> Not to destroy my ummah by earthquake or by drowning. He said, you got that. Or else Allah would have destroyed the whole dunya like he destroyed Ad and Samud. They were the most richest the, 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 in history, more than the pharaohs and more than the Phoenicians. They, they were, they were a very rich, big culture. He said, okay, you have that. He said, don't make my ummah to fight each other. He said, no, that not. That's not accepted. I'm making them to fight each other. Look what they're doing today. Muslim people are fighting each other. Bloodshed. Allah is taking revenge because he gave them Allah said about them in Holy Quran and they don't take a lesson and they will never take a lesson. They are so ignorant, so ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making bloodshed and killing each other. Allah said in Holy Quran, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خيرا لهم منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون يوير Kuntum. You were. He didn't say you are. You were the best of nations. Khaira ummatin. The best of nations that has been sent to humanity. You were. You were where? We are now. Allah said, you were. Means he wants to tell us, from the day I created your souls, I made you the best ummah. 
from past tense, means from beginning of your creation, when I created you, I created your soul, I made you the Ummah nabi the best Ummah that has been sent to humanity. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar. Calling for good and prohibiting bad. And this is what calling for good and prohibiting bad. Now what is happening? We are not seeing that. They are killing each other. They are not calling for good and prohibiting bad. They are saying, oh, we are vampires. We love to be, what? Vampire, is that? With this long teeth. Dracula. Dracula. Huh? <laughs> we are Dracula. We like to suck blood. Back doctors. <laughs> they milk people with money. <laughs> Too much money they take. Then you have insurance? You don't pay. You don't have insurance? Can't pay. <coughs> Sorry. So Dracula they like to suck blood. They are sucking blood of each other, killing each other everywhere. What happened in your country? Very bad. What very bad? Finished. It's signs of the last days. One of the signs of the last days where Prophet ﷺ said, when that day approached, when Jibreel alayhi salam asked him about the last day, he said, Mal mas'uru wa alam min as sail The one who is asking, who is asked, who is being asked, not, doesn't know more than the one who is asking. Yani Jibreel, you know better. And then he said, this humbleness, Prophet knows more, but you see the humbleness? If it asks, if someone say, who knows this? Everyone raise his hand to speak. Yeah, I have a question. Go to a conference and ask, how many you have questions? You see hands coming up. All of them, they have questions. What we were saying? Pakistan. What's happening with them? The signs of the last day. Prophet Wasallam said, when Yaksur al Harj wal Marj, Jibreel said, okay, what are the signs of the last day then? He said, when knowledge will be lifted up. They said, Ya Rasulullah, the Holy Quran will be lifted up. He said, no, ulama will die. There is no substitute. There is no pious ulama will come. And then Yaksur al Harj wal Marj. Too much bloodshed, too much killing between the Muslims. Did you see any non-Muslim country citizen fighting each other? Huh? Look, India fighting each other? Indians? Hindus? No. Sikh? No. Smileys? No. Baha'is? No. Buddhist? No. Hindu? No. West? No. East? No. Central Asia? No. Russia? No. Africa? No. Where we are seeing? They are only Muslims. Arab countries, they fight with each other. Subcontinent, they are Muslims. They are fighting with each other. They, they are, they are Dracula. They, they love to suck the blood of each other. And Allah is saying to to Ummah to Nabi, look, Allah has mercy with us. With all this, we are doing, and Allah say, you are the best of the Ummah. Why? Not because you are killing each other, because you have the secret of Prophet in you. That reality, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad, from his light, he created his Ummah. For that light, Allah is respecting the whole Ummah, because he created them from the light of Muhammad And we still are killing each other. Is instead of repenting and saying, Ya Rabbi, we are 
sinful people forgive us. May Allah stop this bloodshed. They are killing all Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah now. They are killing Sufi people now. For what? They want the power? Take the power. I don't understand why these people, they like the chairs. Everyone likes this chair to sit on it. Give the chair, problems finish. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah bless us. May Allah make you happy and with your families and take all your problems from you. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المستغفرين فيا فوزا للمستغفرين أستغفر الله حرمة الحبيب حرمة الفاتحة. Thank you.